Long ago, in an era of bloodshed and war, Vikings roamed the land conquering everything in sight. What were once brutal heathens were now domesticated farmers. Meet Elnar, a humble worker enjoying his quiet pastoral life alongside his family. Life was amazing until it no longer wasn't. The shift in dynamic was certainly absurd. Regardless, the trio decided to make a run for it in the woods until his mother was struck by an arrow. The brave feline told them to run away, and whilst they wasted time crying and grieving her death, the bandits caught up and grabbed his sister. She tried fighting back but was slashed on the spot. The hopeless man looked on as his entire life went into shambles. He screamed for a savior, but alas, he and a couple of others were kidnapped as slaves and transported like commodities. The cruelty of the ocean knew no bounds, and the severity of human barbarism was even worse. Elnar was in for one rude awakening and saw his entire life crashing down like the endless waves of oblivion. After cleaning up the women and preparing the men, they took them to the market where they stood like mannequins. Elnar decided to make a run for it after stealing some food, but alas, he was caught and taught a brutal lesson. In fact, the master of the land derived pleasure from watching him suffer. Soon after, his expressions dulled and his emotions were in a state of disarray. Elnar grew frustrated by the day and everyone who came by kept on passing him. Until a blonde merchant came along, Kettle then asked him what he was before and after hearing Elnar was a farmer, he wasted no time taking him to his own land. Upon arriving to his new home, Elnar was astounded beyond words at what he beheld. The beauty, the elegance, it caused him to feel hopeful and optimistic for the first time in a while. Kettle then called upon the real MC of the show, Thorfinn the Legend, son of Thor's and rightful heir of the Warrior's Creed. What was once a bloodthirsty warrior now found himself rejuvenated and redeemed. After Kettle introduced the two workers, he explained the rules of the farm and the plans for the future. His optimistic viewpoint and cheerful statements gave Elnar some hope. After all he has been through, he was finally given an opportunity to buy back his liberty. A bit macabre, I know. But it's better than nothing, the devil you know, am I right? After all was said and done, our boy Thorfinn took him deeper into the forest, while the new kid on the block kept yapping his chaps about a guy named Charlie Chaplin. Oh wait, were they seriously supposed to chip wood? God damn, this is going to take an entire century. They had to clean out the entire forest all on their own. So much for being free. Elnar and Thorfinn will be grandfathers by the time they make a dent. Not only did they have to work hard, but they were supposed to beg for scraps from scums who considered themselves superior. They gave them crumbs for lunch, and this caused an uproar between the two parties. Elnar was infuriated, however. Thorfinn calmed the situation down by acting submissive and weak. Elnar considered this ignorant obedience, but our boy was too busy focusing on work to even care. They continued pushing the log into the river, but this proved to be quite the challenge. After a long day of work, they could barely walk and were left like human zombies. While Elnar confronted him about what happened, Kettle happened to pass by, and one of his mistresses caught Elnar's humble gaze. The man was star-stricken and lost for words. The following day, everyone went back to work, and even Kettle was knee-deep in the work alongside them. Now that's how a leader is meant to motivate and guide others. I second this. Elnar was surprised, since he's never seen a rich person willing to get their hands dirty. His son Olmar, however, was acting like a wise guy and giving him a hard time. While these two bickered like longtime rivals, everyone stood in awe, watching them fight over rich people problems. Later that night, he kept on showing off to his beneficial partner, but this was all aroused to manipulate the young prince and share his inheritance. The young lackey might have been horny, but he wasn't stupid. While storming off, he found two soldiers drunken and wasted. Observing their zeal, he wanted to share in the moment and went back to the bar with them. Elnar, on the other hand, started narrating his sob backstory to a man who is famous for the most tragic childhood. This ain't a competition, buddy. Thorfinn obviously had it worse. Meanwhile, a bunch of guys were throwing hands measuring whose stick was longer and whose ego was larger. Olmar, however, was feeling down and kept complaining about being treated like a kid. The two guards, Fox on the left and Badger on the right, were making fun of him, and this caused him to draw his sword. 
Wrong move, buddy, because these guys were trained mercenaries who killed for a living. As he was wailing on the ground like a crybaby, Fox tried calming him down and suggested he take a life to man up. Call it a rite of passage or ritual he must go through to evolve. What a devious monster Fox turned out to be. The following day, Elnar was feeling a bit groggy and stretched his legs to clear his mind. That's when he heard Thorfinn crying out for help, and it seems he was having his usual nightmares. I wonder what he could have seen that was so terrifying. Just then, Elnar laid his eyes on Arnhide and decided to strike a conversation with this beautiful lady. Quite the charming lad, wasn't he? While he was trying to riz her up, Fox and Badger showed up and demanded their presence elsewhere. As they were walking through the beach, Thorfinn explained how they were bodyguards of the farm, and soon enough, they took them to where Olmar and the others were. That's when Elnar realized that this was an execution ground, and Olmar was going to be the perpetrator. Fox told them to submit without a fight, while Olmar kept on shaking in his boots. Elnar jumped at him, and the two started struggling on the ground. That's when Thorfinn volunteered to be killed if they let Elnar go. Meanwhile, the main bodyguard of the farm, Snake, woke up from his nap and started hearing voices outside. After hearing Thorfinn's suggestion, Fox felt vexed about the whole situation and decided to make an example out of him. He kept on threatening him and unsheathed his sword. Snake was gradually making his way towards them, while Fox kept cutting up Thorfinn left and right. Even so, this man wasn't flinching a bit, and Snake was highly impressed by it. Thorfinn then broke into a depressing speech scaring the life out of Fox, who took it too far. Snake had to intervene and gave his subordinate a solid punch. Now that's karma for you. They then brought him some food to eat and he sat there acting like a boss. Afterward, he apologized to Thorfinn and tried attacking him, resulting in a counterattack from our boy. I guess he considered Snake a threat not to be trifled with. This gave everyone an idea of how powerful Thorfinn was, and Snake threatened them not to lay a hand on him ever again. After all was said and done, Ketel's assistant, Patter, patched Thorfinn up, and the whole incident was unacceptable to Elnar. Patter told them to keep their heads down and continue working humbly. Since they were still slaves, they had little to no say in what happened. After bidding Patter farewell, Thorfinn put on his clothes and headed back to the woods like the hard-working Samaritan he was. They went straight to chopping, and you could tell Thorfinn wasn't an ordinary man. Elnar was curious as to who he was and asked him about his background. Thorfinn continued to explain how he has killed before and how he doesn't even remember how much his body count was. Later that night, Elnar was experiencing a nightmare and he got up in a pit of rage, attempting to take revenge on Thorfinn for all he did. As he was about to choke him out, he experienced a sudden realization and decided to spare his life. Since Thorfinn was experiencing a nightmare of his own, where he was still killing his demons, no matter how many he destroyed, they'd still continue to haunt him and deprive him of peace. Elnar knew how much he suffered and didn't hold it against him, since the kid had no option and that was all he knew. Elnar took him by the shirt and started screaming at him from the top of his lungs, telling him to value his life and protect it no matter the cost. Despite hating him for what he did, he wasn't going to let the past dictate his emotions. These two will surely go a long way based on the looks of it. Loyalty above all else, am I right? Elsewhere, the Danish army were walking alongside Prince Knut, who turned into a monster after watching Askeladd behead his father, the previous king, Swain, who was nothing but a prick and deserved the death punishment honestly. The newly evolved prince had conquered lots of lands and was in war with the English alongside his trusted warrior, Thorkel. Together they trampled over everyone and even used cheap tactics such as poisoning to win. Knut knew no mercy and was hell-bent on becoming the next king of Denmark and England. As he was walking through the battlefield, he saw a couple of soldiers trying to pillage the village and he explicitly forbade collecting the spoils of war. He insisted on discipline in his army and met up with Floki, who stationed worthy guardians to follow him wherever he went. As Knut was about to head out, the mad Viking, Thorkel, came rushing in like he was about to cut him down. This guy must be aching for battle and had to be held down and reprimanded by Knut, who told him the victory was already at hand and no further bloodshed was required. This didn't sit well with him, who wanted to kill and fight for a living. He continued to warn Knut and told him not to go soft, since every king needs to establish his throne through violence and war. 
That's exactly what a mad Viking would say. I've always liked his enthusiasm, to be honest. Later that night, Canute was bestowed 4,000 pound of silver from a farmer who wanted them to evacuate his premises and leave indefinitely. However, this was a disgrace in the eyes of Canute, who saw this as an insult, since he considered it weakness to leave his own land in return for measly silver. Canute was able to deduce that they were in cahoots with the so-called King of England and considered their action as treason against him. As a result, he demanded an apology and a sacrifice to be made in his honor to prove their fidelity. They refused the truce and decided to spit in his face. As a result, Canut took them outside and gave the signal to his men. Soon after, they burned the bush, and as the fires roared in front of him, many more started popping up in the distant horizon. There were fires in every direction, and Canut told him to imagine what going to war with him would entail. With a single word, he was capable of destroying his lands, and you could tell this was a badass moment for him. Later that year, the supposed King of England died, and Thorkel was feeling bummed now that the war was officially over. Soon after, he was crowned as King of England and rightful owner of the throne. Back at the farm, Elnar and Thorfinn were giving it their all trying to finish up their tasks. They were giving it their all, however. A certain tree branch refused to budge an inch, and they seemed to be going nowhere. As a result, they went out looking for a horse, but alas, no one was willing to help a bunch of no-good slaves. After all, who'd lend anything to these worthless bunch? While Elnar was going on a long litany, complaining like an erratic teenager, an old man heard them squabbling and summoned them to help him. He made them an offer they couldn't refuse. In return for their service, he was willing to grant them a horse to work with. Excited about the offer, they went straight to work. And boy, did he work them to the bone. No one said it was going to be easy. As soon as they got the horse, their productivity increased tenfolds, and they managed to get rid of all the branches. While they were walking back home, they learned that the old man was actually the father of Ketel and is the original owner of the farm. I guess these two hit the jackpot unexpectedly. It goes to show you why kindness will come in handy. The old man returned the favor by treating them to a meal, and they sat beside Snake sharing stories and enjoying a scrumptious dinner. It was also time to sow their seeds, and they went about it with hope and determination. Snake, on the other hand, was dealing with thieves who kept on robbing their meat and flour. The next day, Elnar continued flirting with Arnhide, who seemed to enjoy his presence. She kept on laughing at his jokes and blushing at his comment. You can tell these two were hitting it off until she was summoned by her master, who slapped her silly and scorned her behavior. Meanwhile, Thorfinn was happy at the progress they made and Elnar started feeling optimistic about their achievements. Soon enough, they'd buy their freedom and become free men. But before anything, they had to pray for prosperity and knelt in front of their crop. Elsewhere, Kettle's older son, Thorgil, came to visit, and you could tell this man was a true warrior. Is everyone with the name Thor a Viking champion? Snake came around and welcomed him to the farm. He then showed Kettle the thieves he caught. Without delay, these two were going to be punished. But first, Thorgil was regaling in the feast they prepared for him. He took the opportunity to provoke his little brother and narrate the tale of Iron Fist Kettle, who knew their dad was a battle legend. Afterward, Kettle acted as judge and started interrogating the kids. That's when he found out their father owed him money and bailed on them. Snake insisted on punishing them, and Thorgil suggested taking their arm. However, Potter interjected and asked to show them leniency. He requested to hire them and make them pay off their debt. In addition, a simple flogging would suffice. Oh wow, isn't that a bit harsh? Thorgil volunteered to do it, and these guys were as cruel as ever. What a harsh world we live in. Our boy was dragged into the depths of the underground, and as he was trying to crawl out, zombies kept on pulling him in, and he suddenly woke up and told Elnar what happened. This guy must have PTSD or something. Other than his wild past, his everyday life seems to be relaxing. His work was coming along well, and this as a result was causing envy to boil around him. He and Elnar seem to be bonding a lot. In fact, you'd think they knew each other their whole lives. As time passed, Thorfinn gradually started to open up to him, but the old man had other plans for them. He wanted them to work and become better. He also wanted them to learn how to take care of themselves and hunt their own food. I sure do admire someone who teaches how to fish. As they returned to their farm, the two were in for a rude awakening. 
Someone had completely destroyed all their hard work. Can't say I didn't see this coming from a mile away. Elnar, for one, wasn't going to let it slide. He was so close to being a free man. Upon walking back home, feeling all depressed and gloomy, Elnar ran into the pricks who messed with his farm and confronted them. Just as he was about to punch them, Thorfinn beat him to the count instead. A huge fight ensued among them, and before they got started, someone caught Thorfinn with a sucker punch, sending him to another dimension. Upon waking up, he found himself in a lush garden filled with tranquility and peace. He thought he had died and started recounting his life. Hold up, did Thorfinn actually pass away? Elnar was holding his own against the riffraff, and this was a three-on-one battle. Even so, they ran away like cowards while Thorfinn saw his father approaching him. Thors then confronted him about the people he killed, and the mood turned sour real quick. The eerie vibes were back, and Thor stood there reprimanding his son about the monster he became. Soon after, the zombies returned and dragged him into the underworld with Thor's bidding him farewell. Wait a minute, are you serious? Thorfinn actually died, but he was supposed to be the MC of the show. He was teleported to the Viking version of Perdition, and Thorfinn couldn't believe this was the Valhalla they talked about in mythology. Countless warriors fighting non-stop, and that's where he met his old rival, Askeladd, just casually chilling in hell like it was a normal day for him. That's when he told him this wasn't Valhalla. Rather, it was the destination of every warrior who was tainted with evil. Only the ones with corrupted souls were sent here, and Thorfinn couldn't fathom what was happening. Askeladd then told him to leave while he had the chance, and escape with his life and sanity intact. The zombies started clamoring to pull him down, and that's when Askeladd jumped into the fray to save him. It's the least he could do after putting the boy through so much suffering. Soon after, Thorfinn got up and carried Elnar away. These two were the real champions of this battle. The following day, they went back to work, and these two looked shredded, like bodybuilding shredded. Fortunately for them, they finally finished chopping all the trees on their end, and it's been three years since then. Soon enough, they were going to be free men after the next harvest was done. Even so, Elnar was worrying about Arnheid, since she didn't have the chance to be free like them. This bothered them both, and made them feel weak and useless. Thorfinn then told him of his dream, and it was to rid the world of war and slavery. Just then, Kettle came by and congratulated them for their hard work. He then told them how he'll clear their debt soon, after he returns from his vacation, and made them an offer to work as retainers once they became free men. Elsewhere, the prince was taking a nap on the ship, and we almost forgot that this man was crowned the official king. The newly appointed majesty returned to his homeland and was greeted by the commander in charge who informed him of his brother's grave illness. Knut started reminiscing about the good old times with his brother and Ragnar, and you could tell he was spoiled back then. After going down memory lane, Knut was feeling disturbed and kept on thinking about the current political situation. Harold was in charge of Denmark while Knut took over England. After visiting his deathbed, you could tell Harold was severely debilitated. Knut tried talking down to him, but it was obvious these were the final days of his life. Just then, the ghost of his father, Swain, came to haunt him and his actions. It seems Knut poisoned his brother and was corrupted by the curse of the crown. The throne tends to bring the worst in people. Haven't we learnt nothing from Game of Thrones? Later that night, Knut brooded in the quiet nightlight, talking to the pesky head of his father. He tried explaining why he did what he did and why there should only be a single king. The next day, the king engaged in combat with his second-in-command and was actually holding his own. Who knew he was proficient in battle? I wonder where he trained. His sister was worried sick, but despite her rising anxiety, the king was doing remarkably well. This proved to everyone that the king wasn't a pompous prick who barked orders. I personally believe every king should be able to defend themselves. Wisdom and strength are qualities a leader must possess. After winning the sparring session, he went inside to discuss the financial matter of their current situation. After being crowned king, Knut sought to find a stable source of income to feed his soldiers and take good care of his nation. While Knut was contemplating, Kettle, Thorgil, and Omar went to town looking to complete a trade. Kettle also brought some gifts for the king while Omar was picking a fight as usual. This guy has quite some nerve to be honest. 
He even pulled out a sword against a defenseless merchant. Luckily, his father came to discipline him and paid off the merchant in droves. But guess who came along, Leif? What are the odds, honestly? Ketel revealed how he also knew a man named Thorfinn, and after describing his features to him, Leif was excited to hear of this revelation. After circumnavigating the market, they went to the king's quarter to bend a knee and pledge their allegiance. There's always bigger fish, isn't there? Knut was highly appreciative of the gift he received, and that's when Omar got up to make a fool of himself. Knut gave him a pig to cut, but Omar wasn't even able to kill a fly and ended up humiliating everyone. The following day, a bunch of soldiers started mocking Omar and calling him a spoiled brat. After telling him he failed to pass the test and laughing in his face, he seemed to have lost his cool. Knowing him, the hothead pulled out his sword and demanded them to duel. He was obviously outmatched and outclassed. He started crying like a madman and got into a heated battle. Even so, he had no battle IQ or experience, and this was starting to look like a one-sided beatdown. Upon seeing his little brother beaten, Thorgil started lecturing his pathetic little brother. He riled him up and insisted he kill his rival. Using the opportunity the spy gave him, Omar managed to land the killing blow on his opponent. He finally achieved his first kill. Thorgil was proud and decided to take care of the rest with the simplicity of beating toddlers. To him, these guys were nothing but training bags he made fun of. He sliced them for fun, and upon observing the travesty, Ketel was speechless. This was a one-sided massacre. Ketel kept on screaming while Thorgil held his ground. The king's soldiers came to apprehend them, but Thorgil wasn't having it, since they were within their right to defend their honor in a duel. As a result of their impudence, Thorgil ended up slashing through the soldiers and defying the king's order. This guy sure is a menace. Could he defeat Thors or Thorkel in a one-on-one -on -one battle, though? That would be a fun matchup. Thorgil then interrogated one of the soldiers who confessed this was a ploy to arrest Kettle and take over his lands. After hearing the awful incident, the king declared war on Kettle and prepared to invade their land. Since when did Kanat rely on cheap tactics to win? Wasn't he a man of honor? But then again, this was the man who poisoned his own brother. It wouldn't be surprising if he followed the footsteps of his despicable father. Meanwhile, Leif gave the signal and the trio got out of the barrel. That's when Leif insisted they keep their end of the bargain, which was handing over Thorfinn sane and sound. Back at the farm, a house was burning down, and it seems one of the prisoners was in charge of the arson. This guy looked terrifying, and the pompous master tried begging for mercy. However, it was too little too late to plead for leniency. As he groveled beneath his feet, the prisoner ended his suffering and left feeling liberated. Meanwhile, Thorfinn and Elnar were preparing to get back to work and started discussing about the offer Ketel made them. It was beguiling, especially for Elnar, who was in love with Arnheid. Just then, Snake was feeling hungry and was looking for the old man. He got on his horse and rode towards the old man's farm and found him unconscious. It seems old age has gotten to this poor geezer, who desperately wanted to work more. Arnheid came by knocking and made everyone a delicious dinner. She then proceeded to feed the old man since she was instructed to take care of him. Thorfinn and the rest started laughing at his pride, and everyone seemed to have enjoyed their wholesome dinner. This was also the perfect opportunity for Elnar to make his move. Now that they were alone, he started feeling ecstatic until Fox came by. He gave Snake the reports about the escaped prisoner and the burned house. The following day, Fox and Badger were following the convict through the woods and found him napping. They decided to ambush him while he was sleeping, and Badger was feeling quite cocky about the entire incident. While they were squabbling amongst one another, the prisoner got up and the scene shifted towards Elnar and Arnheid, casually chatting. Thorfinn wanted to give them some space and decided not to interrupt, however, he was engrossed by the story Snake was reading. Hold up, I'm actually surprised Snake was literate. It's rare finding a Viking who could read and write. Also, why was he taking care of the old man? He must be after his inheritance. While Snake was discussing matters with Thorfinn, Arnheid was washing the clothes and noticed how her hand was hurting. Just then, they saw the prisoner running by and Arnheid screamed out to him, Gardar, her previous husband. As these two locked eyes, Gardar started complimenting her beauty and slowly approaching her. He asked her to go back home but Snake wasn't going to let him have his happy ending. He struck down his horse and challenged him to a duel. 
This is going to be quite the exciting battle, and Elnar wanted to get involved had it not been for Thorfinn. Snake dodged all his attacks and landed a critical blow, knocking him out cold. Elnar tried talking back to Snake while Arnheid sobbed in agony. This was disturbing. Later that night, everyone remained silent until Elnar came up with a plan to rescue Gardar. However, Arnheid refused, since this was beyond their level and started narrating her sad backstory. She explained how they were all living in a peaceful village far from Denmark. However, trouble came knocking, and Gardar gathered the men to protect the village. The women tried protesting, but the men had already set up their minds, and there was no backing down. After they left, brutal Vikings came knocking and burned down the village. That's when they took the women and sold them off. Her tears started pouring down as she managed to keep a brave face. She told them how she was pregnant with Kettle's child and decided to keep a low profile for the time being. Later that night, she bid the old man farewell and went to visit her husband. As she approached the hut, she met up with Snake and pleaded with him to see her husband. He refused, but after he left, she managed to seduce the men and went to treat Gardar's wound. The men tried harassing her and this upset Gardar, who was still madly in love with her. He apologized for leaving her back then, and as she stood there crying, one of the men came by and tried overpowering her. And that's when Gardar attacked him and revealed his monstrous side. However, Arnheid refused to cut him open and stood paralyzed. Upon returning, Snake found all his men ripped apart and decided to exact vengeance once and for all. Meanwhile, Elnar and Thorfinn were discussing matters and wondering what happened to Arnheid and Gardar. That's when Thorfinn confessed his barbaric past to him and how bloodshed is inevitable. He tried getting away from it, but the harder he tried, the more he fell into despair and hardship. War wasn't something you could easily get rid of, since it is tied with power, wealth, and status. No one would want to abandon these pursuits, especially the Norsemen, who considered themselves brave warriors. Thorfinn was still haunted by all the souls he took, and that's when Elnar promised to stay by his side. He then told him of a magical land called Vinland, far beyond the sea, there existed a magical land. All of a sudden, Fox and his men came by looking angry and started scrimmaging through their abode, while Snake was watching guard at the old man's hut. Elnar ran back to the hut with Thorfinn chasing him and telling him not to do anything reckless. Snake wasn't bothered by their presence, and Arnheid seemed chill about the whole incident, pretending like nothing happened and confessing what happened the previous night. She broke down into tears and told them how he was gravely injured and hiding underneath the old man's bed. The audacity is insane. Even so, Arnheid had no option since she was overcome with grief and overwhelming love. It's true that emotions do tend to cloud your judgment. As she continued to wail in agony, Thorfinn and Elnar decided to help her out however they could. The lover boy promised to protect her, and this simp was worse than a fanatic weave, honestly. Soon after, Arnheid walked in, and Snake insisted she cook out in the yard, since she was used as bait. The old man tried talking Snake out of it, using persuasive arguments. However, Snake had his men slaughtered. This was more than personal for him. The old man then told him to take over the land and inherit his will after he was gone. Just then, they saw a hooded figure lurking behind the trees and started chasing after him. It was none other than Elnar, who was acting as bait to lure them away. Thorfinn snuck in, while Elnar was running for his life. As they were chasing him, Snake's gut instinct started screaming at him, while Thorfinn was safely loading Gardar to the carriage. He then met up with a furious Snake who was looking to throw hands, and Thorfinn was completely locked in. Even the ghost of Askeladd came through to motivate him to fight. The two squared off, and this was promising to be the fight of the decade. It was finally time, the moment we have all been waiting for, the legendary duel between two masters. Snake had finally met his match, someone with superior speed and technique. Their battle was a beauty to behold. Even with a weapon, Snake was unable to lay a finger on him. Goes to show how skilled Thorfinn really is, I need to keep the pressure on! What's this? I see them. 
After a marvelous battle, Snake had enough and stabbed Gardar straight to the chest. Everyone assumed he had died until the dead man arose and caught Snake in a reed naked choke. Now that's what I call power. Fortunately for Snake, Arnhide convinced Gardar to let him go and escape with her. They both got on the carriage and rode away. As Gardar was bleeding out, his memories kept flashing before his eyes. He had a wonderful life, filled with laughter and bliss. Despite all the suffering he went through, he was still grateful in the end. He slowly passed away, sleeping on her lap, in the most romantic way imaginable. He was then reunited with his kid in the afterlife. What a touching moment we witnessed. Meanwhile, Canute and his men were making their way to Catel's farm alongside Floki and his soldiers. These guys meant business, and His Majesty was willing to make an example out of him. Meanwhile, Leif and Thorgil made it back, while Kettel was still sulking like a baby. They were told war was upon them, and the villagers seemed extremely worried. Leif, for one, had high hopes and rumors started spreading around about the upcoming war. Fox started complaining about it, while Elnar and Thorfinn were tied up once again. What were they going to do about them? Also, what was going to happen to Arnhide? Things weren't going their way and disaster was looming on the horizon. Thorfinn felt hopeless, since he was unable to do anything, and fought Snake for nothing. Ketel went back to the hut calling out for Arnhide like a deranged fool. His wife told him about Arnhide and what she's been up to. After hearing of her betrayal, Ketel was lost for words. This man was about to lose it. Meanwhile, Snake refused to let Leif see Thorfinn, since he wasn't aware of the agreement they made. Elsewhere, Arnhide was tied up in the stable where a horny fellow tried hitting on her. That's when Ketel showed up holding a stick, and he seemed to bear ill intentions towards her. Without saying another word, he struck her with all the force and might he could conjure. She tried begging for mercy and explaining how she was pregnant. Even so, he didn't believe her and continued to act like a monster. Fortunately, Snake came through and stopped him before he unalived her. What a vicious tragedy. Elnar met up with Arnhide and Pater, and he explained how she had little time to live. Later that night, Kettle gathered all the men in the village and started riling them up for the upcoming battle. Snake looked down upon them, since he knew they were weak and that they'd lose. Meanwhile, Thorfinn explained the situation to Leif and why he can't leave without resolving matters. Even so, Leif wasn't about to let go of him and promised to stay by his side. However, Arnhide was really suffering and things weren't looking good. The following day, Snake observed the warships approaching and they waited by the beach to ambush them. However, they were struck down by the arrows and Floki's warrior chased them down. Afterward, Canute sent a messenger to threaten Kettle and order him to stand down. Thorgil came by and told them there were only a hundred soldiers down there. This caused them to mock the army, however. Snake knew that these guys were ruthless savages. Even ten of them were strong enough to hold down the fort since they were the Yam's Viking, comrades of Thor's and Thorkel. Snake informed his men to run while they can while he was wearing his armor in preparation for the war. Just then, Snake decided to tell them a story of Iron Fist Kettle. They used to be good friends in the past, and upon coming to the farm to meet him a few years later, he saw that this wasn't the Iron Fist Kettle he knew, but a different man altogether. It seems this copycat stole his name and status to exert authority over others. Despite hearing the truth, they marched forward with Kettle leading the army. Thorgil and Omar started strategizing alone, and he suggested attacking the king with a surprise attack. It was finally time for the battle, and Ketel gave the signal. Thorfinn looked on and gave the signal to go on ahead. They decided to kidnap Arnhide and escape while they could. Even so, our beautiful lady was stuck inside another dimension, and it seems her life was fleeting by the minute. Back at the battlefield, Floki and his Vikings were cleaning the place and wiping the floor with them. Omar broke down in tears, while Thorgil slowly snuck up behind the king like an assassin. The Vikings were actually having fun tearing everyone limb to limb. Fox looked on in horror as Badger was about to die. Fortunately, Snake came to his rescue and commanded everyone to retreat. As they ran back, Ketel learned the harsh truth of warfare and was almost struck down. Thorgil saw his opportunity and swung his sword at the king, who barely blocked it. However, his right arm was broken and it was obvious he was on the losing side of this battle. His subordinates speared Thorgil and almost chalked him to death. He was then surrounded by the rest of the Vikings and decided to run for his life. This could have ended badly. 
Fortunately, Snake found Ketel alive and carried him to safety. Meanwhile, Arnheide was taking her last breath and bid them farewell. She started seeing visions of Gardar and her children and decided to thank Elnar for everything he did. As she passed away in his arms, Elnar couldn't bear the pain of watching his loved one perish right in front of him. Now he understands what Thorfinn felt when he saw his father murdered. Needless to say that this was a painful moment to experience. Thorfinn started narrating the bliss of Vinland and promised to go there someday. Just then, Elnar saw Kettel and was about to kill him. Thorfinn tried holding him back but got slugged. Even so, Thorfinn reciprocated and knocked some sense into him. After burying her, Thorfinn asked Leif to wait for him a tad bit, since he wanted to speak with Knut one-on-one. -on -one. After all was said and done, Knut gathered the deceased and commanded Floki to stand down. Olmar, however, was unable to handle the sight of the injured and succumbed in the face of fear. Everyone was going through it, and inside the hut, a huge debate erupted. Half voted to stop the fight, whilst the other half insisted they fight. Snake insisted on backing down, despite Thorgil's persistent claims. After a heated argument, Olmar came in and decided to surrender. Since he was the rightful successor, he had the last vote, and it was finally settled, and the fighting ended here and now. While they were arguing with one another, Thorfinn went ahead to speak with the king. The soldiers refused to let him pass and started mocking him, even though he informed them that he served the king in the past. One of them punched him and challenged him to a duel. The king was informed of his arrival and decided to ignore him since they had bad blood between them. Despite their extreme size difference, the soldier was unable to lay a finger on Thorfinn. Elnar came to his rescue, but Thorfinn wasn't going to listen. He then made a bet with everyone. If he could endure 100 punches, they'd let him speak to the king. Quite the bold bet. Do you think Thorfinn has that dog in him? The size difference between the two was significant. Even so, Thorfinn kept on eating the punches one after the other. Who the hell is this guy? He is shifting his body slightly upon impact to lessen the damage. What a wise tactic from a small lad. Just then, Snake showed up distracting Thorfinn, and he fell for the first time. Snake insisted he stop right away, but Thorfinn refused and continued tanking the attacks. He stood there and endured all 100. Everyone admired his resolve and realized what it meant to be a real alpha male. It's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Thorfinn then confronted the king about his tactics and apologized for the scar he gave him. After they reconnected, Thorfinn kindly asked the king to stop his rampage and convinced him to become a better king. This man sure is a surprise. I'm starting to feel inspired as well. After their conversation, King Canet gathered his men and went back home. He then forsook his military might and became a peaceful king who ruled with wisdom and love. Thorfinn really pulled a number on all of us. After a few days, he and Elnar bid everyone on the farm farewell and sailed away to his home. The environment was much different than Kettle's farm. Upon returning home, Thorfinn met his sister, even though she didn't recognize him. In fact, she took him for an imposter, since to them, Thorfinn died alongside their dad. Later on, he went to meet his mother, at least she recognized him, telling him he resembled his father a lot. What an emotional reunion it was. He met up with the rest of the family, and everyone welcomed him with open arms. However, his sister was still mean to him. Now that's one ferocious lady right there. I wouldn't want to get on her bad side. You know what? Even though Thorfinn and Elnar went through hell, it all worked out well for them in the end. They were finally free men. That's all for this recap. Vinland keeps on throwing out bangers left and right. If you enjoyed our video, please leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, stay true.